Today we've got 10 rules of positive parenting for better behavior. I'm Dr. Paul Jenkins. And I'm Vicki Jenkins. Let's do this in countdown style. Be sure to stick around for number one. Everybody loves a countdown. So let's do one for parenting to increase better behavior, okay? This will be good. Coming in at number 10, yell less. Mm. One of our top videos here on the channel is how to get kids to listen without yelling. Right. And we all get trapped there sometimes. This is one of the first things that we want to eliminate. Yell less. Number nine, smile more. Sounds simple, right? This makes kids nervous, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it also changes the energy of the home. Do it as a little experiment. Just pick a few hours during a day when you intentionally smile more. One of the moms in our coaching group did this with her kids. It was amazing what she, what she noticed from that. And she actually got feedback from her kids that it made a difference for them too. Smile more. Here's number eight on our countdown. Choose to enjoy every stage. Mmm, the stages, huh? And every stage of development. Because right. there are fun things to enjoy when your kids are are infants, when they're toddlers, when they're young children, when they're older children, even when they're teenagers, there are things that you can enjoy. The part that I want to emphasize here, Vicki, is the choice. choice. Yes, it's your choice. Make an active choice to enjoy the stage your child is in. Until you see it as a choice, it's not. And it's easy to get trapped in that. So make a conscious effort to do that. That's number eight. Coming in at number seven, focus on the relationship. As opposed to? The outcome. You know, right. I think so often we get so de just attached to, I want my child to be like this, to do this, to that. We can just focus on the relationship. How is the child feeling about himself when I'm interacting with them right now? One of the ways that we said this recently in a family reunion where I was facilitating some family development, mm -hmm. relationships before rules, mm. but still rules. Right. <laughs> We're still going to do the rules, but putting that relationship first, that's where the focus needs to be. The sixth rule of positive parenting for better behavior is to get good at consequences. Now, what do you mean by consequences? Consequences for misbehavior, basically, okay. or consequences for the things that you're working with your kids on for the better behavior. Okay. We got to get good at consequences. A lot of parents run into frustrations because they're not sure what kind of mm. consequences to use. And we're not getting into all the details of that on this particular video. We've got other resources for you on that. But you got to get good at it. This is a skill set for parents. So expect to do some work, expect to put in some practice, and get the help that you need to get good at consequences. So mentioning those resources, just take a moment and subscribe right here. We've got lots of ideas for you on how to tailor the consequences to bring about better behavior. Rule number five, detach from the outcomes. This is a hard one. This is a really hard one because we often think that our parenting is judged by the way our children behave or the outcomes. And really we are trying to get better behavior, right? This is kind of a counterintuitive one. We want to detach from the outcome, even though the reason we're doing this is to hopefully bring about better outcomes. Well, and I can throw in a psychological <laughs> right. reason for this because somebody has to be attached to the outcome. Right. And if it's you, it's not your kid. Yeah. And they are very efficient in their thinking. <laughs> okay, so they're, your kids are thinking all the time, hmm, should I worry about this? Or should I let somebody else worry about this? <laughs> oh, somebody else is easier. So yeah, I'm, it's gonna be easier. if mom's worried about this, I'll just let her worry about it. If dad's sweating, he can sweat. Right. And then they detach from the outcome. We want them to attach to it so we get to detach. Not easy, but powerful. Coming in at number four on our countdown of positive parenting for better behavior, stage, not age. <laughs> Write this down somewhere and think about it a little bit. Stage refers to stage of moral development. Right. And different kids at different ages can be on different stages. So you might have 
a younger child who is very mature and makes good decisions and cooperates and obeys. You might have a teenager who does exactly the opposite. You know, I remember in a seminar we did once when a parent, the light bulb went on. They have, they are the parent of a child with special needs. Hmm. And all of a sudden it was like, ding! Oh, she's on this stage. Just because she's this old does not mean she's on this stage. And it just kind of changed all of the way that this man approached his parenting now because he understood it was stage, not age. Right. It was powerful for him. And the stages are something that determines how we do our discipline. Right. What kind of consequences we, we use. Mm -hmm. So the fact that your child is... 13 and demanding a phone, the fact that your child is 17 and demanding some independence doesn't mean that they're mature enough for that yet. Right. That has to do with their stage of moral development. So just write this down somewhere, stage, not age. And we'll put some other resources in place to help you to understand what that means. That's absolutely important. Rule number three is one of my favorites. It is love your children. That is a <laughs> great strategy of positive parenting that helps bring about better behavior. This is your job yeah. as a parent. What is your job? To love them no matter what and even if. This comes naturally to most parents, but we need to acknowledge it as one of the rules of right. positive parenting. Mm -hmm. Probably this one didn't surprise you either because you know how important love is to mm -hmm. positive parenting. Notice that uh, there's still two rules left. Ooh. And even though this is your number one job as a parent, to love them no matter what and even if, there's still a couple of things that we need to pay attention to. So that brings us to rule number two, and that is to take care of the team. Remember, this mm -hmm. team is something that you are going to develop. It might be you and your husband. It might be you and a parent. It might be you and a best friend. I don't know, but you have to take care of that team. There's an old saying that it takes a village right. to raise a child. It takes a team at the very least. When the team is strong, the child has the best shot at success. That's why we're saying this. Let me give you a quick example. Sometimes parents feel a little guilty getting a babysitter or someone to take care of the kids for a little while while they go out and take care of the team, their relationship. Ultimately, this is one of the biggest gifts that you can give to your children to strengthen that team. It secures them. It creates more safety and predictability in their world. I worked for about 13 or 14 years doing child custody evaluations for the court. Bitter, angry, divorcing people couldn't figure out how to share their kids. The team was fractured. And there's still things you can do if you're in a multiple household family uh, to strengthen that team and to give those children the stability and the security that they need. What could even be more important than loving your children and taking care of the team? Mm. Rule number one, we are at the final part of our countdown today. Take care of yourself. Ah, that feels so counterintuitive as a parent, doesn't it? To and take care of yourself, but it's the most it important rule of positive parenting. If you're out of the picture, then you're out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and your kids need you. Also, there's another aspect to this, Vicki, that I don't talk a lot about on this particular channel, but this is important. If you're not taking care of yourself, who is yeah. taking care of you? And if the answer is your children, this is backwards, and that will damage your children. They should not be in a position where they have to take care of their parents until maybe later in life when right. <laughs> you, know, you get old and they need to take care of you then. I'm talking about when they're young. And when they're going through these important developmental stages, I've seen this in my clinical practice where children, because of addiction or because of uh, other disabilities or problems, have to take care of their parents. Mm -hmm. We want you to be the very best parent that you can be for your child. That means you get to take care of yourself. Right. That's the number one rule. Mom to mom, you've got this. There are so many resources available to you. And that next video is going to give you some tools that will help you to teach your kids responsibility. Cue that one up next.